Hello everyone. Today we will study the side determination, attachments and the peculiar features of clavicle. Now this is the clavicle bone. Clavicle is a long bone and it is present onto the front of the root of neck here. Now we can feel the whole clavicle. So this bone is subcutaneous throughout. Also we can feel that this bone is lying horizontally. So this forms a peculiar feature of clavicle. It is a long bone which lies horizontally. Now similar to the long bone, it is having a shaft and two ends. This part is called a shaft and the two ends are these ones. Now the ends as it is present horizontally are the medial end and the lateral end. Now how to differentiate between the ends, which one is medial and which one is lateral? The lateral end is flattened, whereas the medial end is quadrangular in outline. This is flattened end and this is quadrangular end. So the quadrangular one lies on the medial side, that is it articulates with the sternum to form the sternoclavicular joint and the lateral one is flattened and it lies on the lateral side. It articulates with the acromion process of scapula to form acromioclavicular joint. Now, the anterior and posterior sides or direction of clavicle can be determined as the shaft is convex anteriorly and uh, in, on the medial side and on the lateral side it is concave anteriorly. That means the shaft on the medial aspect is anteriorly convex and on the lateral aspect is anteriorly concave. Reciprocally, the posterior side, on the medial side, it is concave and on the lateral, it is convex. Now, the superior and inferior of the shaft can, de can be determined as the superior surface is smooth because this is subcutaneous in nature. So, the superior surface of clavicle is smooth throughout, whereas on the inferior surface, some tubercle, a ridge, a groove are present and these all makes the surface rough and uneven. So the superior side is smooth whereas the inferior side is having a tubercle, a ridge and a groove. So in this way we can determine the side of clavicle. The medial end is quadrangular, the lateral end is flattened. Anteriorly the shaft on the medial aspect is convex whereas on the lateral aspect it is concave. The superior aspect of clavicle is smooth and in the inferior aspect, a tubercle, a ridge and a groove is present. So, the clavicle can be kept according to these features and the side can be determined. So, this clavicle is of left side. After that, the general features of clavicle. Now, the shaft of clavicle. The shaft of clavicle is divided into two parts. The medial two-third part and the lateral one third part. The curvatures are meeting the, at the junction and this junction is of medial two third and lateral one third part. Now the medial two third part it is cylindrical in shape whereas the lateral one third part is flattened. So the medial two third and the lateral one third this in this way the clavicle is divided the shaft of clavicle is divided into two parts. Now this point, the junction of two curvatures is the weakest point of clavicle and the most common fracture of clavicle occurs at this point only. Now, first of all the medial two-third part. Now, the medial two-third part as it is cylindrical or quadrangular in shape is having four surfaces. After keeping the bone in correct site and in correct anatomical position, we can very well demarcate the four surfaces of the medial two-third. First one is this one which is the anterior surface. The posterior surface facing toward me is the posterior surface. This is the superior surface and this is the inferior surface. Now the attachments or the features present on the individual surfaces. First of all the anterior surface. Anterior surface is rough and it gives attachment to a muscle which is the
clavicular head of pectoralis muscle uh, pectoralis major muscle the origin to the clavicular head of pectoralis major muscle it takes place from the anterior surface of medial part of shaft then the superior surface this one the superior surface as i said earlier is subcutaneous throughout except near to the medial end here it gives origin to the clavicular head of sternocleidomastoid muscle here near just near to the end it or, uh, gives origin to the clavicular head of sternocleidomastoid muscle on to the posterior surface near to the medial end it gives origin to some fibers of sternohyoid muscle and lateral to it some important structures are related first of all internal jugular vein then internal jugular vein joining with the subclavian vein to form the brachiocephalic vein then brachial plexus the trunks of brachial plexus are present and then the third part of subclavian artery is present so these important structures from medial to lateral side are co coming in relationship with the posterior surface of clavicle now on to the inferior aspect this one on to the inferior aspect we can see that the articular surface which is present on to the medial end is extending somewhat here also like this now this articular surface is for the first costal cartilage actually the sternoclavicular joint which is formed on to the medial end is a compound joint and it is having three components first is the clavicle second is the manubrium sterni and third is the first costal cartilage so the articulation of costal cartilage and the clavicle takes place on to the inferior surface then lateral to this a rough impression is present on which the costoclavicular ligament is attached the ligament between the first costal cartilage and to the and the clavicle the costoclavicular ligament is attached on to the inferior surface then lateral to this surface a groove is present which is called as subclavian groove and subclavian groove gives insertion to subclavius muscle and the lips of subclavian groove give attachment to clavi pectoral fascia which is the muscle uh, which is the sheath enclosing the subclavius muscle so these are the structures which are attached or related to the medial two third of clavicle i repeat them on the anterior surface clavicular head of pectoralis major on the superior surface near the medial end clavicular head of sternocleidomastoid on to the posterior surface near to the medial end sternohyoid muscle then relation of important structures of neck then on to the inferior surface first of all the articulation with the first costal cartilage then the ligament costoclavicular ligament then the insertion of subclavius muscle enclosed within clavi pectoral fascia which is attached onto the lips of subclavian groove after that we come to the lateral one third part of clavicle now the lateral one third part as told earlier is flattened so it is having two surfaces and two borders the two surfaces are superior surface and the inferior surface and the two borders are anterior border and the posterior border now the attachments and features on the anterior border a muscle is taking origin the deltoid muscle the deltoid muscle takes origin from the anterior border of lateral one third also the origin extends onto the superior surface similarly onto the posterior border a muscle is inserting which is called as trapezius muscle and the insertion is extending onto the superior surface also like this so anteriorly deltoid origin and posteriorly insertion of trapezius onto the superior surface these muscles extend and rest of the surface remaining surface is subcutaneous now onto the inferior surface a tubercle 
and the ridge are present. Now this tubercle is called as conoid tubercle and a ridge is extending from this tubercle to the lateral end which is called as trapezoid ridge. The conoid tubercle and the trapezoid ridge. Now these two structures are giving attachment to a very important ligament which is called as coracoclavicular ligament. The conoid attaching onto the conoid tubercle, conoid part and on the trapezoid ridge is the trapezoid part of coracoclavicular ligament. Coraco means coracoid process of scapula. So this ligament is a strong bond of union between coracoid process and the lateral end of clavicle. Also this ligament is of very important importance as it is transmitting the weight of upper limb to the clavicle. The lateral end does not transmit the weight. The coracoclavicular ligament transmits the weight of upper limb to the clavicle. So these structures are coming in relation or are attaching onto the lateral one third part of clavicle. After that we come to the ends. First of all the lateral end. The lateral end I told earlier is forming a synovial joint with the acromion process of scapula. The joint is called as acromioclavicular joint. It is a plain synovial joint. Now as it is a synovial joint it is giving attachment to the capsule which is encircling the margins of this articular surface. So this is about the lateral end. Coming to the medial end. Medial end is quadrangular in shape. It forms a synovial joint with the notch articular facet present onto the manubrium sterni and it forms the sternoclavicular joint. Now the articular surface extends onto the inferior surface also where the first costal cartilage is articulated. This joint is a saddle type of synovial joint. It is a compound joint because of three participants and it is a complex joint because the joint cavity of this joint is divided into two parts with uh, uh, into two parts because of the presence of articular disc. Now articular disc it is attached onto the posterior superior aspect of the medial end here. The capsule is attached onto the margin, whole margin. Apart from this, the thickening of capsule anteriorly is called as anterior sternoclavicular ligament and posteriorly is called as posterior, uh, posterior sternoclavicular ligament. Another ligament which is joining the two clavicles with each other is the interclavicular ligament. It is attached onto the superior aspect of this articular facet. Articular disc is attaching posterior superiorly and the interclavicular ligament is attaching superiorly. That was all about the attachment and side determination of clavicle. Please like, share and subscribe if you like the videos. Thank you for watching.